Claus, it's me, Wilma Fingerdy, with another chinwag, and I am so honored to have drag royalty in the Fingerdew household today. Miss Kitty Litter ATX, all the way from Austin, Texas. How are you, doll? Well, um, actually, I think I need to look around for that drag royalty. <laughs> Where are they at? Where are they at? <laughs> Lies! <laughs> How are you, love? Well, I am uh, great because the air conditioning's on, but we have uh, been uh, hotter than hell up here in north north of the uh, the, the the 49th parallel. Uh, we, um, I mean, Toronto is the most southern point in Canada. Like, we're further south than Chicago. So we get heat, but we get a lot of humidity, and that's the worst. I, I can handle heat. But when I feel like I'm walking through the world's armpit, it's not pretty. See, I can do humidity. It's humility that I have a problem with. <laughs> yeah. When you're this gorgeous, it just <laughs> comes with the territory. Well, I want to just have a moment to say for people. Now, it, with my Patreoners and the people that follow me on YouTube, they all know who the hell you are. In fact, I sure. was talking to my Patreoners about doing a chinwag with you. And there were a few people who hadn't heard of Camp Wanakiki. And mm. so I got them onto Camp Wanakiki and they fell in love with you. You were a finalist for season two. Correct. You yes. did very well. You did very, Thank very you. well. I, I am probably more surprised than anybody, uh, not only to be cast on this show, but to do as well as that I, I did. Well, now, do you know how many people uh, submitted for your season? They literally audition like thousands of people throughout the United States. Wow. The audition I went to happened at the Austin International Drag Festival. Oh. Um, and it was kind of a fluke for me where I said, well, why not throw my hat into the ring? I had seen this show on YouTube uh, season one uh, and just fell in love with it. And I, as soon as I saw it, I said, well, that's my tribe. I, I know these people, I feel what they're doing. And camp has always had a huge place in my heart and comedy drag. So I was like, this is my wheelhouse right here. Uh, but when I went, of course, there were lines just going around the, the hotel uh, for the audition. And they had went to LA, New York, Chicago, all over the place searching for people. Uh, for my audition, I walked in, I had accidentally had a piece of toilet paper stuck to the back of my shoe that was trailing on the floor. And uh, the sugar bakers were kind enough to mention that there was a little something there. And I said, oh, well, you know, I'm from the South and usually when something white and unpleasant is following me, it's the Ku Klux Klan, uh, you know, <laughs> because that's how we roll here. And they immediately broke up and they were like, okay, we see you, uh, you know. So when they called me a few months later, I was just absolutely gobsmacked. I was like, are you sure you don't have the wrong number? Uh, because I knew how many people had um, tried to get on the show. So to be chosen was a great honor. Um, the difficulty came because I got my list of looks two weeks before the show started, which was two weeks later than uh, everybody else because they sent it to the wrong email. And I literally had called my best gal pal here in town and I said, girl, I don't think I could pull this all together in two weeks. And she was like, you are being given the opportunity of a lifetime so you pull your big girl drawers up and you do what you need to do to uh, make this happen. So I sat there every night for hours just hot gluing and stitching and doing whatever to try and uh, pull it all together. Do you think that that was uh, beneficial to you that you really didn't have a lot of time to overthink anything? Uh, quite possibly. Also the fact that for me, um, when I got to camp, I saw that many of the campers had had looks designed for them by people, that people had made stuff for them. They had custom-made wigs, all that. Um, I'm a dime store drag queen, um, and I have to do make do with what I can create or find. It. For me, half the fun is in that process. Uh, so I'm happiest when I'm at my little crafts table putting some together, uh, be it a look or a costume, whatnot. Uh, so, 
having to work under the wire like that, A, it was beneficial as an experience because in real time, sometimes you don't have weeks or months to pull it all together. You have to kind of just zip something up. So it helped with that and also uh, just, just you know, spontaneity and whatnot. When my stuff arrived at camp via FedEx, it looked like it had been kicked around a soccer field. So there was lots of last minute uh, reparations to try and fix the damage or whatnot. Thank God for duct tape and uh, uh, Gorilla Glue or it might not have happened. Well, I'm very surprised to hear that because I mean, I'm noticing on season three, which we'll talk about in a minute, but sure. I didn't feel watching you on uh, Camp Wanakiki season two that your look was less than. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't even think sure. you got critiques on, oh, if only her drag was elevated. Do you know what I mean? The experience that I took away from it was the sugar bakers told us, they said, do not uh, look at the comments. Don't look at the comments. And of course, what's the first thing we will do is look at the comments. And uh, there were some critics out there who were somewhat less than kind. Uh, and they had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I admire about people like you and Maddie Rance and um, there's some other people that I follow, Bussy Queen, some other people, is they uh, have some compassion for the performers um, and know that it's not just what you're seeing on the screen, but mm -hmm. that they're human beings and that they have lives and that there's situations and all kinds of uh, circumstances that play into what you finally see on the screen. Yeah. So when somebody's sitting in a bathrobe and slippers at home and some rollers talking about, did I look like trash? <laughs> um, I'm just like, okay, that's that's an opinion. That's a thought, but uh, some people come really hard for entertainers and I don't think it's necessarily fair if you haven't you know, there's constructive criticism and then there's just cruelty. And But do you find you know. this now, I mean, we're, we're looking, at, we're halfway through All Star 6, we're looking at season 14 of Drag Race coming at us. Do you feel now that people have forgotten what the art is in the art of drag? Okay, so here's the thing, because I'm, I'm old as Moses, my take on it is when I started doing drag, and of course the, the many people that preceded me in this, we were grateful just to have a space to perform in, you know, and to not get hauled off to the hooskow for uh, putting on a dress or whatnot. People nowadays kind of take that for granted. They can walk down High Street in full drag, and people are, most people are not going to be shocked or astounded. In many cases, they will applaud them for that. It wasn't always so. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that it's watching the evolution of it has been amazing to me. We didn't have RuPaul's Drag Race. We had like uh, Milton Berle in drag or Flip yeah. Wilson Flip or Wilson. somebody. Yeah. Um, and that was all we saw of drag on TV. We didn't have competitions and all this stuff. Um, and... I think in a way it's made me appreciate it a little more um, because when it's just given to you like that, you don't realize the journey that it took to get to where we are now. Yeah. Now, I, I'm always intrigued by the mechanic. Like, I have a history. Uh, my work background is in television, radio, uh, on both the production side and as a performer. So I'm always intrigued by uh, the production side of a show like Camp Wanakiki. And so my question to you is, how long did you film for? Oh, uh, okay. So it was just a little short of two weeks. And um, for people who think that, you know, half your day is spent sipping cocktails in the backstage lounge or whatever, it's so not that. Um, let me just put it into perspective that both Tora Hyman, uh, who won season two, and I, we're getting up at like 4 35 o'clock in the morning to get into face and costume uh some of the campers slept a little later um and they were laughing at me because i would literally like 
once I finished, I lay down on the bed like Dracula with my arms crossed and not move because I didn't want to mess anything up. But, um, yeah, so you get up early, early in the morning, you go out, you film a segment. A show like Camp on a Kiki, you're not in a studio, so you are subject to the weather. Um, and where we were in, we filmed in Wisconsin, um, and it was snowing, raining. We had extreme heat, all kinds of foolishness going it on. It snowed? It was like, oh, yeah. And we had mud. And this was in May. And we're supposed to be at this summer camp. So we're all wearing, like, <laughs> very summery outfits and freezing our uh, backsides off while we, uh, you know, tried to pretend that we were frolicking in this uh, sunny wonderland. Right. It literally was, they'd film a scene, then you had to run, you had to get into your next look. They film things out of sequence sometimes, which is not something everybody knows. So you might film something for day two on day one or vice versa. It goes all over the place. They might forget something from the previous day and have to go back to it. So yeah. you have to go back into that look that you had for that uh, that particular scene. How um, long was the shooting gets, day? Oh, like from, we say from about 7 o'clock in the morning till sometimes 12, 30, 1 o'clock the next morning, literally. Wow. It was an all-day affair. Wow. Um, and, it, of course, they gave us breaks and they were humane about it. Yeah. But uh, it it is a long process and there when you're when you get to the point where you're tired and your emotions are in there and you're getting into your feelings and your insecurities um those long days it makes them a lot longer <laughs> were you surprised that you made it to the finals <laughs> I, I, I thought i was gonna get kicked off the first day and i'm gonna tell you this but when i met that group of campers um I was just gobsmacked by all their talent. Yeah. You had people that, uh, you know, they could paint, they could do costumes. Um, everybody brought their own strengths to the party, yeah. but it did show also that we all have our skill sets. Some people are gifted at comedy. Some people are, uh, you know, great at stand up. Some people are theatrical. Um, and some people have a look. Um, but not everybody has all of that at the same time, yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah, it's very uh, rare to find anybody that's like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, present company excluded, of course, because you're One you're thing fabulous. that I was so impressed, though, by you, and I forget what episode it was, but you had to come up with a cheer. Oh, and sure, you, sure. You did it like that. Is that how it came out on the set? Like, was it that fast for you? It really was um, one of my I recently discovered skill sets, is, if you will, is uh, the ability to write um, and to do parody and to do uh, uh, just sit there and make stuff up on the spot like that kind of improv. Um, and that worked out rather well in that particular yeah. challenge. Um, and I was pleased that they didn't look at me and say, what are you thinking with this you know yeah. uh which could have been the case but yeah well, it worked out well for that challenge particularly i think when it involves writing i think it's more common to find less people with that skill set and in my opinion i felt like your team was all kind of like deer in headlights I, and you threw that out and they all looked at you and they were like, "Yep, no problem." <laughs> Miss Kitty Litter. It, it was yep. one of my. It was one of my proudest moments uh, on the show. That and uh, that hot damn high wire thing, because I literally said in my uh, application, they ask you what your fears are, and I was like, "Well, spiders, of course. Those Dragula folks that get into coffins and have tarantulas dumped on them. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. So the heights was up there." Yeah. So when they marched us out to those giant poles and high wires and whatnot, I was like, you got to be kidding me. My old behind is not going to climb up there and, and, you know, do whatever. But I did my thing. I saw I was literally one of the last ones to go into it. And I had seen all the younger kids do it. And I said, I'm not going to let these people get the best of me. I'm going to go up there and show them that uh, 
that the old folks could do it too. Yeah. You know. Well, you you really were. I, I have to say, uh, you were one of my favorites. Um, I I was so pleased you lasted as long as you were. I mean, you were up against some interesting queens too, because Dina Fire was killing it. Tora Hyman was killing it. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Tora did win, and she was her her look was certainly elevated, and she had put a lot of thought into it. She's been actually one of my dearest friends from the show. Um, as far as we're all a family, but some of us are distant cousins, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, and I'm the crazy old aunt. Yeah. But Tora and I correspond regularly, and uh, I have a lot of admiration for her. She's working with Ginger Minj and doing stuff with Disney and cruises and whatnot. Yeah. So. Um, I say hats off to her, but yes, we did have uh, many, it was a competition because there was some real competitors out there. Well, now I do want to talk about your YouTube channel. First of all, everybody needs to subscribe to your YouTube channel because you are a hoot and a holler. And, oh, thank you. Well, the thing I love the most are your parodies. I think the last one I saw, because... You know, I'm very busy and famous. I don't get to watch a lot of stuff. But that's when I do, I, I, your channel is one of the ones that's in my feed, and it'll pop up, and you're one of the ones I'll click on before a lot of people. And A, your videos are very short. Even your reviews of Drag Race, uh, sorry, of Camp Wanakiki season, <laughs> right? Uh, Camp Wanakiki <laughs> season three, they're very concise, and they're, they're watchable. They're not too, too long. And, but your parody songs are hilarious. First of all, they're hilarious, but the <laughs> lyrics are brilliant. Well, thank you. Um, and like I said, that was just like something I really didn't even know I had in my wheelhouse. Yeah. It became very prominent during the uh, pandemic because I was asked to do shows on Twitch and whatnot and quickly found out that they will... Uh, censor you in a minute for copyright issues or whatnot even uh showing your feet on twitch is a thing and i was like i said why and they said because it's like sexually fetishized in some areas of the world i was like if they saw these hooves girl they would not uh think that anymore <laughs> you and me both but, uh, oh. yeah but so i had to figure out how to work outside the box so that my my uh performances weren't getting blacked out or deleted or whatnot so i said well hey i'll just make my own you know and mm -hmm. i can't sing to save my life um and obviously not the most polished entertainer on the block but um i do try and bring some comedy to it and there's a lot of songs that i think are just begging for a parody <laughs> is there is there an album in the future do you think you know i have been asked of uh, when I did my Mariah Carey Christmas parody, people were like, girl, you need to get that on Spotify. What the hell? They were like, that's hilarious. We would totally like, you know, buy that. So who knows? I think I've been on this journey. My thing and my advice to everybody out there is don't just get stuck into one thing. You got to throw darts at the dartboard yeah. and see what sticks, yeah. you know. Yeah. Doing the, the parodies was, was a try that worked. Doing Camp Wana Kiki was a try that worked. Um, and there's also been many that didn't, but you just keep going. And sometimes people will get it. Sometimes people will say, well, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Are there things uh, on your list you want to try or you have planned to uh, explore? Um, it kind of comes randomly to me that I'll just get this wild hair and say, wouldn't it be funny to do this, you know? And uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it, it you know. You, you never know if you're going to fly if you don't jump out of the nest once in a while. So, um, you know. Now, I do I do want to come back to Camp Wanakiki, uh, mm -hmm. Not only because uh, it's the reason I know who you are, uh, but uh, they are they are kind of in their their fourth. I think they just released their fourth. Uh, I'm a, I'm a member of theirs, so I see them sure. early. But the um, uh, the fourth or fifth episode of their season, and they've just announced auditions for season four. What are you thinking of season three so far? I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, first of all, I will say that. Uh, 
props to the Sugar Baker Twins, Hamburger Mary's, and Ruthie Keister, plus the production staff and the campers for coming out there during the pandemic, you know, which had to be difficult. You know, people had to get vaccinations. Uh, there's the whole fear of traveling uh, out in, in public and being in groups. I'm, I'm still having the feels on that here, you know, with the Delta variant. I thought Delta variant was the newest queen on RuPaul's Drag Race, but, uh, you know, well, she's she still in the now, competition, she y'all. <laughs> but, uh, she, uh, no, so uh, hats off to them. Uh, and I actually know some of the entertainers that are on there, uh, and it's breaking my heart every episode, uh, just like it did when I was at camp, because I know what the journey is like, and it takes one um, not so great look or whatever, and then you're gone. So every week you have to be on top of your game um, or be able to sell the heck out of that story um, so that you could stick around. It must um, affect how you review the show, though, having gone through it yourself. It is, and I'm not trying to come at it from a place of animosity or, or whatnot. Usually if I say something, I'm, I'm never going to clock people on their paint because, other than to say it's fabulous because uh, I can't paint for, for nothing. Um, it's just not my wheelhouse. So if I say think about somebody's makeup, it's going to be positive. Um, but, yeah, criticizing them is usually going to only be done in a way – that's that's helpful like i would have done it this way or maybe here's something you could have added or here's the way you could have done this differently but calm people just flat out trash or they're ugly or they're fat or they're this or that i don't i don't cotton to it i don't subscribe to it and i know it's popular in our culture um especially in the rupaul's drag race fan base um to be a little bit acidic in our critiques and observations of people. I don't I think also that's feel it's, I also feel it's popular with an age group because I don't know, but on my channel, I don't get a lot of that negativity. And when it, there's been maybe two, maybe three people tops in the, in the eight years I've been reviewing Drag Race that have got stroppy with me, and I often, yeah. I often try and like just diffuse the situation by saying, well, that's, I see what you're saying. I'm not arguing with you. Why are you arguing with me? Can't I have an opinion Oop, as well? And, and they don't like that. And then I, I, I just delete them and can block them. And, and that's fine with me. Like, that's not someone I care to have follow me. <laughs> a delete button is a drag queen's best friend. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And I will say it's not limited to the millennials, though, because I will tell you that. I went to a uh, performance of somebody who I had huge respect for um, that's older uh, in a certain of a certain age. And I went up and was like, oh, I was introduced to them. I said, I'm so honored to meet you. And they looked at me and said, what is this and why is it speaking to me? Um, and I was like, OK, first of all, you old enough. You should know better. And don't forget where you came from, honey. Uh, no, 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 we won't do this. It goes to show that even with performers, some people who you might think, and you, I think you touched on this on one of your episodes, there are some people you think are fabulous human beings, and then you meet them, and they're just not. Um, and then there's other people who will surprise you with what a big heart they have and, and with all the things that they do. And we don't always get to see that in a uh, edited TV show, you know. Yeah. Well, I think the audience also, they forget that you're in a situation that's not normal to you. You're in a lot of cases when these reality shows are being filmed, you're out of touch with your support group. Uh, you're not sleeping regularly. You're in, in Camp One and Kiki's case, in drag all day. Like that's that right there is going to throw some people off their game. And I, like, for me, I might not like what I've seen on a show, but I don't know these people. I don't know what they're, like, you often hear, like, oh, so-and-so supports the whole family with their drag. It's like, that's fantastic. I'm not judging their life. I'm judging the show. I totally get that. Thank you for saying that, because 
as you know, Kim Wanakiki actually had a scandal this uh, season. Oh, that's right. And without going into too much detail on it, I will just say that I had several people uh, come to my social media sites and start attacking me and saying, well, if you don't take a stance on this and that, uh, then you're going to be the next one canceled. And I was like, well, first of all, it's not my season. Um, I don't know all the particulars of this. And to this day, I don't. I think that the, I will say, I think the sugar bakers, given the limited amount of time that they had to deal with this situation, eventually made the right choices yeah. um, in trying to be fair to all the other contestants yeah. and not cancel the whole season because people had went to a lot of work. And I think the edits that they did were correct. The statements correct. Um, and just on a personal note, you know, touching somebody without consent is never okay. Um, yeah. That's just my feelings and I yeah. stand by that. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm not doing the uh, kitty litters judging everybody's life show because if I did, I don't have enough uh, camera battery life to, to even make that happen. That would take like years to put together especially misbehaviors uh in our lgbtqia Ugh. rainbow you know and it and certainly brought some ownership and responsibility to these production companies because there was a time when they would have just used it to make more money oh yeah yeah so and i don't i don't believe that the people involved with this franchise are are that kind of people yeah. I found them to be very supportive of all facets mm -hmm. of uh, the community, and they definitely are showing diversity, uh, not only in this season, but the two previous, mm -hmm. uh, where they brought in, you know, you had a fab queens, you had drag kings, you had yeah. uh, black, white, whatever. There was just, there was a whole rainbow going on there. And I appreciate that because it's taken some other shows a lot longer. Yeah to cross that bridge, you know. Well, and that's another thing I love about Camp Wanakiki is the, you're not seeing, like, I feel like Drag Race has now become a fashion show of about five or six designers. It seems like the same five or six people are making everybody's outfits. And I don't feel I'm getting to know these drag queens because they're wearing ordered, made by someone else. They often don't see them till they get to the show outfits. Whereas right. with Camp Wanakiki, you're seeing that queen, that queen's personality, their aesthetic, uh, their their interpretation, and their skill level. There's there's sure. just a much better connection, I feel, on a show like that. For me. Well, and I, I think initially RuPaul's uh, Drag Race started off. It's so different. Um, yeah. I liked it better then because yeah. they focused more on the creative process. Yeah. Um, Whereas now it's more focused on the drama and like you said, the looks. I'm enjoying more the, uh, the versions that are coming from overseas yeah. are giving me much life uh, because they are a little more diverse and I don't feel they're as, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like cookie cutter produced, yeah. um, you know, like you said, you get a formula and it yeah. works, and so you kind of stick with that. Yeah. I think overseas they're stepping outside of the box. When I see these ones from uh, Drag Race España or uh, uh, the, the European ones, all those, I was just like, wow, that I, I'm feeling that all kinds of ways. You yeah, know? yeah. Especially the UK, I I have big life for some of those people yeah. because the whole panto thing and all that, which here in the states we don't necessarily see or get yeah. you know yeah do you have any uh, predictions uh for camp on kiki season three do you do you see a front runner yet <laughs> okay so keeping it real i'm gonna say that uh i love all of them and there was already one of them that got sent home who i was just sure was uh, gonna be in the top which one was um, that of uh, that well Red Corvette being one who I kind of I was initially stunned, I was just stunned. Like, the the pain, the the personality, just everything was working for me and the costume. And his drag um, was so unique and so art. It was beautiful. It, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Um and then uh this week, of course, that uh Vivian Vendetta Sinclair it broke my damn heart. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, uh uh 
I saw the comedy there from the, the get-go. I just felt it. Um, and she had one week where she had a look that wasn't as great, and yeah. it, it ended up sending her home. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen her because I thought she really had the comedy thing down. But I was surprised I that Vivian St. Clair was the youngest. Not that I didn't think she looked young, but I just was like, oh, there was nothing about what she was doing that said this is a younger person. No, she uh, she gets the comedy thing to me. I, I just see it. Her delivery, her timing is impeccable. Yeah. Uh, and just her personality, she's yeah. got it, that humor thing going on. I, I was feeling her, so to see her go home was very sad. Uh, it was sad to see all of them go home. Uh, Kylie Michaels, you know, I, I thought she was great. Gilda Wabbit. Um, but like I said, all it takes is that one time that you show up in an outfit that, and it may not even be a bad outfit, right. but in comparison to what else is being put out there at that time, that might not be the best, right. you know. I'm seeing America Powers really just stomping through this competition. Uh, she's the not only the daily challenges, but the looks that she's bringing to stage every time. Um, the personality, there's just it, it's a big package going on there. So I'd be very surprised not to see them at least in the top, you know. Well, I have to say, I have just enjoyed chatting with you so much because, as I, as I said, you're one of those people, uh, every once in a while you get uh, a gem from a show. Uh, whether they, they win, lose, or draw, there's always a standout. And I feel like on season two of Camp Wanakiki, you were that for me for sure. And uh, you haven't disappointed at all. I really like what you're doing with your YouTube channel. I'm hoping that Camp Wanakiki has you back season four for a judge. I'm absolutely shocked. Did, did they even bother to ask you to come back this season? Uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> you know, all I gotta say about that is... <laughs> well, <Yeah>. la di da <laughs> Well, they hey. should. They definitely hey. should. Um, <laughs> I, I, really, I really thought you did an excellent job, and I think you're doing a great job with your YouTube channel. I hope that... Uh, uh, more and more people uh, take a look at it and and take a look at it for what it is, which is really uh, you just doing you. Yeah, and and that's the thing for everybody out there watching. My there's like two hundred Trixie Mattels out there. There's you know Alexis Mateos all over the place. There's this, that, and the other. And to me, it's like while I appreciate those performers. They're already them, so why be there? Be yourself, and that will shine through at the end of the day. You know, a lot of people can be put on an act or whatever, but if it doesn't intrinsically come from you in some way, then um, it may not come through as genuine or whatever. Um, so I just say be yourself at the end of the day. You may only have two people to get it, but them two people are going to be in your corner the whole time, you Absolutely. know, laughing. If people want to find you on the socials, where are you? Um, oh, well, you know, I have a huge following in Canada, by the way. I meant to tell you that Winnipeg Correctional Facility, uh, they're sending me emails all the time. I, uh, and I'm they're so They're a good bunch of boys that, there, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, total strangers pounding away on their laptops thinking of me. And some of them even have computers, so I'm like, I just think it's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, but yeah, I'm on the Instagrams, I'm on the uh, Facebook, I'm on the Twitters, I'm on the, uh, 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 what's the other ones, uh, Reddit. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and of you course know. your YouTube channel. I'm going to put all of your links down below for everyone so they can uh, have no excuses to get uh, up close and personal with Miss ATX herself, Kitty Litter. Um, I, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to have a chat with me. Well, thank you. There is one other thing that I do want to put out there. It's current stuff that's going on with me. All right. Um, I just recently was lucky enough to get to host uh, the uh, Miss Kitty's Cat Box Cinema, where we were reviewing camp movies, kind of like what uh, you're doing with your, your uh, makeup, makeup and, and, movies, and yeah. movies thing. Oh, I that's great. I love it. 
because I have an appreciation for those films. And I was just like, oh, yes, the Ritz, all that. So thank you for bringing that to us and for your spirit. Oh, thank um, you. But doing it at the drive-in has been a hoot and a holler um, and getting to mm -hmm. share those movies with some people that have never experienced them has been a treat. Um, I have to, I just got uh, photos taken for this new book, Legends of Drag, which is coming out soon. Uh, some of the Camp on a Kiki uh, members are in there. I think the Sugar Bakers, Dear Ruthie, um, it's going to be fabulous. So look for it in your bookstores. Also, uh, Drag Clubhouse is doing the Rainbow Celebration Cruise in uh, October. So I'm going to be on this ship uh, headlining with uh, Pandora Box, Ka Kasha Davis, uh, Darian Lake, uh, Mariah Parents, Balenciaga, uh, Coco Jam Holiday, Diana Fire, Party Favors, and Maxi Glamour. Wow. Uh, we're going to have a party on that boat. So if any of you are interested, dragclubhouse.com. Get your tickets going down to Long Beach and going to the Mexican Riviera in uh, October. They'll probably leave me there. <laughs> do you perform at the drive-in or is it just I movies? I do. Uh, well, the way we've done it is we'll do a parody of whatever movie's going on as a video clip. And then I'll come out and do a live performance. Uh, it's not glamorous because we're out there in the dirt with mosquitoes pecking at us yeah. and whatnot. It's just so much fun and it's socially distant. People are driving out with like boxes of sushi and bottles of wine and whatnot. Uh, they doing it up right. You know, it's like four star luxury. They bring their lawn chairs and we sit and then afterwards, we have a kiki. I'll, I'll comment while the movie's going on. Afterwards, we'll have a kiki about the movie and what people thought of it. Right. Um, and it's so fun to get these new takes on old classics. Yeah. I'm dying to do Sex Tet. I'm dying to do Valley of the Dolls, right. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Uh, there's just tons of films out there uh, that need a good roasting. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I wish I was in Austin. I would definitely come to that. That's I love a drive-in. You're always welcome. Well, I've been drove in so many times, I can't even talk about it. But I just, I want to say I appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, watching your reviews has been such a treat for me because I don't always get to watch the full episodes because I do a full-time muggle job plus everything else. Yeah. So I go to the people that I can trust and rely on for uh, accurate information. And I think you bring that to the party. Uh, it's very insightful and very smart and very kind, which that combination doesn't always happen with uh, reviewers. So thank you so much for bringing that spirit. I, I just really worship you. I think you're wonderful. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, uh, I definitely um, hope for nothing but continued success. Uh, and uh, and take, don't be too much of a... Uh, of a party animal on that cruise ship now. <laughs> now I have I to look take forward... a vacation from the vacation. Right, yeah. Oh, you will. You'll also need to, if you're anything like me, I think I gained 10 pounds in a week on a cruise. It's like, that's a lot of food that's just sitting there waiting for you to eat it. <laughs> Not that food has you know, to I'm wait excited, for me. Cause I've never been, been on a cruise and I'm thinking, you know, the last time I saw something that big that has so, that many people in it, was when my ex sent me pictures of him at Bear Week in Provincetown. So, I, you know, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that happy note. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, my darling, and uh, continued gay success. Big love to all y'all out there. Thanks for the chin wag. Mwah. <laughs>